Wow! Hello viewers of Internet Activity. It's your favorite shop dwelling Sarah here with another car view. And today I have the all new 2022 Lexus IS 500 F Sport Performance. Because Lexus couldn't just make it simple and call it a Lexus ISF. I had to go and be difficult and add all the other nonsense to the end of it. Marketing. Anyway, it's still got a V8 under the hood and that's all that matters. After a long hiatus, Lexus has finally decided to put the correct engine back into the IS. And no, I did not mean the 3S GE beams, which is also a correct answer for this situation. Let's cut straight to the point. The first thing you're gonna notice with this new IS500 that's wrapped in heather gray sweatpants, I mean iridium silver paint, is this two inch bulge in the center of the hood because there's a five liter stuffed under there as it should be. Like the other F models, it does have functional aero as well. As far as the important bits go, right here is a set of OEM Enki wheels. They're 19 by eight and a half front, 19 by nine and a half rear. They are cast, they're not forged, but there is an optional set of BBS wheels that are forged you can get also 19s. They're wrapped in a 23540 front to 5540 rear Bridgestone Potenza S001L tires. Behind them though, up front you have a set of forged monoblock calipers that are powder coated black with the Lexus logo on them with a two piece front rotor 14 inches in diameter or this many millimeters. And in the rear, a set of single pot calipers with a 12.7 inch rotor. Again, I have no idea off the top of my head how many millimeters that is because math is hard. And for those of you that are big on fitment, you can see the tire has a slight stretch to it and it is tucked in the wheel well just a bit here in the rear. I like the little lip spoiler you get on the IS500. The double humps on the sides kind of reminds me of the old school Legacy V4 Blitzen. And because it is a five liter V8, you do get the quad tip stacked exhaust in the back, the gloss black painted rear diffuser, that's nice. It may not be as fast as the current generation M3, but I'll take the looks of a robotic catfish from space over a beaver that smokes meth any day. Real quick, before I get this thing out in the road and do the driving portion of the review, I'm not gonna skip out in the interior, but I just gotta say there's nothing in here that really grabbed my attention was over the top. And this is as basic as it gets for a Lexus in the back seat. There's no USBs, there's no heat or ventilation back here. I have a window button, an oh shit handle, that's pretty LEDs at least. There's no crazy crystallized glass panels in the door cards like you get in some of the upper Lexus flagship models. It just, everything in here means business and it's got some cheap elements like the glove box, just a little plastic knob that's really light to close by the way. I like that this one does not have a sunroof. That's a nice touch because usually these cars all have them. Seating wise, they are heated and ventilated. The steering wheel is also heated, bolstering, Good, satisfactory, that's for sure. I don't think I'm gonna go sliding around in here anywhere. Still, in the year 2022, it has a slot for plastic Frisbees. Infotainment system wise, it's stereotypical Lexus in here, just like every one of their other models with a little touchpad to control it. It's nice. The stereo system though, the 1800 watt 17 speaker Mark Levinson sound system is on point. It's one of the best sound systems out of any car I've ever reviewed. Uh, the gauges, it has a little robotic dial that moves over. That's fun. I like messing with that thing. Other than that, it's, I don't know. I feel like this interior will age very well just because it is so simple and classy looking in here. of science is now time to give it the beans. I'm going to use my drive mode selector. As far as drive modes go, there's a knob down here in the center. You can change from eco to normal or custom, sport and sport plus. I'm gonna leave it in sport S plus. I'm going to disable traction control. Now I can press it once, it just turns off traction control or I can long press it and that turns off stability control as well. Ready? Go. Okay. dude. That's good. I 
didn't want to give it too much assistance on the launch because then it would just left a huge patch of 11s. I wish this had launch control. That's the only thing I would change. Due to popular demand from my second car review channel, link up above to that if you're new or you want to check it out. Welcome to Garage Science 2.0, a new extended garage science on these car reviews on this channel. Without further ado, let's get this thing up in the air so I can take a look under its gray sweatpants. Up. Oh, that's weird, they paint the mufflers. Looks like they literally just spray paint them black. Before we get underneath here, I have to say, the Lexus was kind enough to loan me one of their prototype models. So this is pre-production. The fit and finish may not be 100% what it'll be on the actual production version. With that said, this is kind of neat. This plastic tray has little turbulence generators molded into it. That looks like the front of a Jeep. Weird. Literally the first thing that came to mind when I saw this rear subframe and where the rear diff is at, it looks like headlights and the grill of like an old Jeep Willys. Kind of, do you see it? I don't know, I thought that was cool. On the IS500, you get the Torsen LSD as standard, which normally comes on the track and Fuji Speedway editions of the RCF instead of the torque vectoring rear diff. Man, they really did crimp the exhaust pretty flat to get underneath the subframe and the rear diff right here. I think this car would benefit greatly from an aftermarket exhaust system. Out back, you have a multi-link rear suspension comprised of both steel and aluminum and Takiko struts. That's kind of cool. The rear knuckle is made out of aluminum as well, and there's some extra holes right down here that are machined for some other type of application. I'm not really quite sure what that is for, but it's interesting. Lilac and light blue coated hardware. That's what's up. A garage science wouldn't be complete without the slow panning underbelly shot. Lots of plastic down here to keep things slick and aerodynamic. You can see the drive shaft is up above that heat shield above the exhaust system, which is made out of all stainless steel because it's 2022 and that has to happen now. This is something I've come to love on Lexus models, how they do this. It's really pretty how it just steps up. There's some fairly significant bracing underneath here to keep this chassis nice and stiff. That's actually really cool how they incorporated this brace into the tail half of the transmission. And then it has this finned plastic diffuser panel underneath it. I really like the way they did that. That's wild. It went all out on the arrow on this thing. There's like some little fins right here in this plastic underbelly panel and some gross like road boogers or shit or something. That's nasty. And some more vents back here. Oh, it's still splattered back here. What the hell was that? Gross. Oh, that's neat. This little cup that goes around the rear O2 sensor and the green and red wire cover. I guess they're in a Christmas spirit. Now the transmission in this IS500F is the only one available. It is the Eisen AA80E. Eight speed automatic transmission, has a torque converter for stall of 2250 RPM, plus or minus 250 RPM, in case you want to know that. Somebody out there did. And uh, that's also, I believe, the same transmission that came in the original ISF, or maybe a reworked version of that same gearbox. Double wishbone front suspension. It's mostly all aluminum in construction. Does have adaptive variable suspension as well. It's an interesting looking setup. It's all one unit right here for the double ball joint that connects your tie rod end and the knuckle with the lower wishbone. I just noticed the whole front subframe is all aluminum on this car. All one big piece. You think that would help save weight, but this thing's still 3,800 pounds. Oh, I can't help it. I gotta flick this rock. Ouch, <laughs> that was fun. So weird little textured corner piece underneath there. Look, it's got an air inlet to direct air at the brakes. They did give you at least a small access door for if you have to do an oil change on here, but pretty much everything else is completely covered in plastic. All right, it's time for that braking test. Ready? No one behind me. Hold on, penguin. Ooh. Wow. Wow. Those are good. Those are really, it was so firm and just solid feeling. That was, I love the pedal feedback. It was just like, ugh, I got you. Those are good brakes. Hello, I'm back. Under the hood of this 2022 Lexus IS 500 F Sport performance, such a long title, is the 2UR GSE. It is a 5 liter naturally aspirated V8 co-developed with Yamaha 
that produces 472 horsepower at 7,100 RPM with a red line of 7,300 RPM and 395 pound-feet of torque at 4,800 RPM. It's honestly not that tight of a, yeah, it is. That's super tight. Oh my, it's like millimeters from the manifold to the side of the frame rail. I wish the intake platinum was blue like you get in the other F models. Let me take this off though, because this is a 90 degree V8, so yeah, see the cylinder heads are up high. They're not stuffed down in there by the frame rail. So it's, I wouldn't be that, that bad to work on. It's just, you're gonna put like long tube headers on here. That would suck. Injector drivers up here on top of the valve covers. And the valve covers are also metal on these. They're not plastic like you see in a lot of up-to-date modern engines. This is essentially the same engine that was in the original Lexus ISF. However, over the years, it has increased in compression from 11.8 to one to now 12.3 to one and a significant bump in horsepower as well. You see the packs right here for the adaptive variable suspension. So that's why this thing sounds so good. There's a little vacuum actuated flapper door right here on the side of the air box to allow more air in for sound resonance. Usually they have an air box silencer in that thing's place. The 2UR block is a 94 by 89 and a half bore and stroke, and this does employ Toyota's D4S port and direct fuel injection system to help clean carbon deposits off the backs of your intake valves. I believe there's a strong probability that the next generation of Lexus F model sports sedans is gonna use something similar to like we see in the new Toyota Tundra, that 3.4 liter twin turbo V6 that's already made its way into some other Lexus models. And that's why this car is so important. This is it, this is an end of an era of naturally aspirated high revving V8 driven sports sedans. That right there is why I'd have this over one of the European competitors. Supposedly, this car is supposed to compete against the M340 and not the M3. As a car enthusiast, that doesn't make any sense to me because it's like a hundred horsepower difference between the two vehicles. And if you look at the specs alone, this is pretty comparable to an M3 as it also competes against the S4 and the C43 AMG. It's a Lexus IS with a V8 stuffed under the hood. It's an ISF. I don't care what any marketing team says. Unfortunately, I don't have access to review Audis or BMWs. I have, however, driven an F80 M3. And I'll have to say in the short amount of time I had in that car, that thing was a fucking weapon. And maybe that's why this is not called an ISF because it really doesn't compete against that car on a performance level, I think at least. But today's market with all the electric performance vehicles out there like Tesla's if this right here is not the reason why you would choose a car because of the sounds that it makes and the feeling it gives you in your spine when you hear that NAV8 roaring then why would you not just choose an electric car because it'll mop the floor with any internal combustion engine vehicle you can buy. So I would choose this over an M3 because it's the last of a dying breed of NAV8s. It's not the fastest car you can get, but that just sounds so incredible. A Yamaha and Toyota partnership under the hood that screams the 7300 RPM. That's why I missed the old E90 M3. Yeah, it had rod bearing failure issues, but that car sounded incredible. This car is not perfect by any means. I feel like they just tuned it down two clicks on everything. Everything is a little rounded on the edges a bit, except for the transmission. The downshifts on this ISN 8 speed are good. They're aggressive and really just like kind of surge you in your seat when you downshift and grab a gear. Handling wise, it's pretty good handling wise too though. I feel like the Fuji Speedway Edition RCF was a good benchmark of how this car should be handling wise. Just it's a little notch above, a little bit more crisp. And I wish this car was like that. 
So if you've never seen one of my car reviews before, I have multiple categories to rate and assess them. Starting with the bean score. It is a rating of one to five beans based on feeling that butterfly gets when you give it the beans. And this IS 500 F Sport Performance is getting a rating of It's a lot like the RCF. It feels a little bit smaller than the RCF, but performance wise, it's pretty spot on. It's just lacking that launch control and that's it. Next is the cookie score. It's assessment of what you get for what you spend on a one to five cookie scale. And the IS500 F Sport Performance, as it sits, is getting a rating of it's pretty decent value here you can start getting into trouble once you start adding options on it like any other vehicle but not too bad next is the wrench score as an assessment of how much of an ass pain a car is to work on and on a one to five scale five being absolute best car to work on one being a complete shit show disaster the is 500 f sport performance is getting a rating of two point two wrenches. It, it would kind of suck just a little bit. It's pretty cramped in there, but uh, I don't think you'll have to work on it that often because it's a Toyota product. So hopefully this thing should last. Lastly is the Penguin score. It's a rating of how much I personally like a vehicle. And this car right here, it's getting a rating of I'm normally not a fan of sedans. I personally would take an RCF over the IS500, but I'm glad this car exists. And it's special because it's kind of a last of an era. And I think that's what makes this car so appealing to me. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review and I will see you soon with another. Bye.